Here we're going to look at some nice sum identities that have to do with the Fibonacci numbers. So let's just recall that the Fibonacci numbers are defined as follows. So we've got the first Fibonacci number, which we will denote by F sub 1, is the same as the second, which we will denote by F sub 2. Those are both equal to the number 1. And then we have the recurrence relation that kicks in. So F sub n plus 2 equals F sub n plus 1 plus F sub n. And that's true for all n bigger than or equal to 1. So what we want to look at is two members of what makes up an entire family of sum identities involving reciprocals of quadratics in the Fibonacci numbers. So in particular, we're going to look at the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over F sub n times F sub n plus 2. And then the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 4. And this is going to outline a method for calculating all sorts of similar identities. And we'll leave you with some of those to look at at the end. Okay, so let's maybe first look at this one. So we're going to consider this sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the nth Fibonacci number times the n plus second Fibonacci number. And we're going to think about this. And remember that taking a sum is a lot like taking an integral. And if you were to take an integral of 1 over a product of two functions, what method would you use? Well, obviously, it would, it would depend on what the functions are. But it's likely that you would use the method of partial fraction decomposition. And so that's exactly what we're going to do here. And so just to outline this, we're going to take inspiration from integration and use partial fractions. So let's see what that means in this case. So we're going to take this thing which makes up the sum. So in other words, this f sub n times f sub n plus 2 in the denominator. And we're going to try to decompose that into a over f sub n plus b over f sub n plus 2. And let's see what we can do here. And so approaching it the same way we would if we were integrating, we'd probably clear the fractions so we can work without fractions. And we can do that by multiplying the whole thing by um, this product, f sub n times f sub n plus 2. So that's going to give us 1 on the left-hand side. And then that'll give us a times f sub n plus 2 plus b times, times f sub n on the right hand side. And now we're going to look at this and see if there's anything we can do to it so we can combine some terms. And there is. Because we have this Fibonacci recursion, the n plus second term can be written in terms of the n plus first and the nth term. And that's exactly what we'll do to this. And so let's see what that gives us. That'll give us 1 equals a times f sub n plus 1 plus f sub n. So notice I just replaced the n plus second term with that using the recurrence, which, which defines the Fibonacci numbers. And then we're going to have b times f sub n. And now we're going to combine like terms on the right-hand side. So we're going to think about the f sub n term and the f sub n plus 1 term as being different. So we can combine that. That still leaves us with 1 on the left-hand side. And then we have a times the n plus first Fibonacci number plus the quantity a plus b times the nth Fibonacci number. OK, great. And now we want to tweak these coefficients so that this equation is true. And the way we can do it is as follows. We can let a equal 1 over f sub n plus 1. And notice that will work out because 1 over f sub n plus 1 times f sub n plus 1 is 1. But that means that this coefficient in front of f sub n needs to be 0. And we can do that by pointing out that a plus b needs to be 0. In other words, b must be negative a, but that will be negative 1 over f sub n plus 1. OK, great. So just to reiterate, we set a equal to the number so that this entire term was equal to 1. That means this entire term has to be equal to 0. And that resulted in this equation of a being equal to 1 over f sub n plus 1 and b being equal to negative 1 over f sub n plus 1. And that gives us this partial fraction decomposition of 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 2 is equal to 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 1 minus 1 over f sub n plus 1 times f sub n plus 2. And that's just this equation plugging in for a and b what we determined down here. OK, so I'll clean up the board, and then I'll bring this up to the top, and we'll finish this first identity off. 
On the previous board, we determined that we could decompose this sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 2 as the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 1 minus 1 over f sub n plus 1 times f sub n plus 2. Now the next thing that I want to notice is that an infinite sum is really equal to the limit of the partial sums. So let's set this equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum as little n goes from 1 to capital N of this same thing. So that's going to be 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 1 minus 1 over f sub n plus 1 times f sub n plus 2. But if you notice, this thing is going to telescope. And that's because this term right here and this term right here are, are offset by exactly one. So let's write out some terms of the series so we can see what's going on. So this is gonna be the limit as capital N goes to infinity of, so let's write down the N equals one term first. So that'll be one over F sub one times F sub two minus one over F sub two times F sub three. So like I said, that's the N equals one term. Now let's write the n equals 2 term. So that'll be 1 over f sub 2 times f sub 3 minus 1 over f sub 3 times f sub 4. But notice these are equal and have opposite signs. So that's going to set up our telescoping action. Plus dot 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 and then the last one here will be 1 over f sub capital M. f sub capital N plus 1 minus 1 over f sub capital N plus 1 times f sub capital N plus 2. Great. And now what we can notice is that this thing is going to telescope. So this term right here is going to be canceled by this term right here. Then this term right here is going to be canceled by something in the next grouping. And then finally, this term right here is going to be canceled by something in the last grouping. And so after all is said and done, our partial sum, which we're taking the limit of as capital N goes to infinity, will be equal to 1 over f sub 1 times f sub 2 minus 1 over f sub n plus 1 times f sub n plus 2. Great. But now it's pretty clear that the limit of the Fibonacci numbers is infinite, which means the limit of the reciprocal of the Fibonacci numbers will be 0. So as we uh, let the limit action occur, that term is going to go to 0 which leaves us with just one over the first Fibonacci number times the second Fibonacci number. In other words, one over one. In other words, this sum is equal to one. So let's go ahead and write that down right here. And then we'll clean this up and pick up on the next sum. We just got done proving that the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over f sub n times f sub n plus two is equal to one where those are Fibonacci numbers. Now we're gonna explore this related sum, but now it's one over f sub n times f sub n plus four. And so I've written that up here, and we're gonna use the same strategy that we used before. In other words, taking inspiration from integration and the techniques of integration, we're go going to attempt partial fraction decomposition. So let's take this one over f sub n times f sub n plus four, and see if we can write it as a over f sub n plus b over f sub n plus four. Great. So just like we did in the last case, Let's go ahead and clear the fractions here. So I'll multiply by this product, f sub n times f sub n plus 4. And that's going to give me 1 on the left-hand side. Then we have a times f sub n plus 4 plus b times f sub n on the right-hand side. And now what I want to do is decompose this until I have some like terms. So I will continually rewrite f sub n plus 4 until we get a term involving f sub n keeping in mind that if we ever get the offset that looks like this guy right here, we can perhaps use that. Okay, great, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll take this A, and then we're gonna take this F sub N plus four and write it as F sub N plus three plus F sub N plus two. And then we have plus B, F sub N, great. Now we're gonna leave this F sub N plus two because it's likely gonna be useful to work back with this sum. So let's just decompose this f sub n plus 3 term. So now we're going to have a f sub n plus 2 plus f sub n plus 1 plus f sub n plus 2 and then plus b times f sub n. 
And now we've got this f sub n plus one term, which is a bit trickier to work with, but we can kind of invert this recursion to write f sub n plus one as f sub n plus two minus f sub n. Great, and so notice we get that just from subtracting f sub n from both sides of this equation. Okay, so now let's see what we have. We have a times, now let's see what all a is multiplying. So we have one, two, three copies of f sub n plus two, and then negative one copies of f sub n. So we have a times the quantity three f sub n plus two minus f sub n, and this is gonna be plus b times f sub n. Great, but now notice that we can kind of combine like terms exact, exactly like we did before. So we have three a times f sub n plus two plus b minus a times f sub n. And now let's play the same game. So notice we have one equals this term over here. And so we can let a be equal to something so that that whole term is equal to one and the whole other term is equal to zero. So let's just reiterate that. We're going to work with these two terms so that this is equal to one and this is equal to zero. So let's see what we can do to get that. So that's gonna give us a equals one over three times f sub n plus two. So that's pretty obvious just by dividing both sides by uh, three times f sub n plus two. But then notice here, if b minus a equals zero, that means b and a have to be the same thing. So in other words, b is also equal to one over three times f sub n plus two. Great. So, but that tells us that this one over f sub n times f sub n plus four can be decomposed a over f sub n plus b over f sub n plus four with those two values of a and b, which I'll go ahead and write those in at the top of the board and then we'll finish it off. On the last board, we determined via partial fraction decomposition that our goal sum, which is the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over f sub n times f sub n plus four, is equal to one third, so I took the one third out of the whole thing, times the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over f sub n times f sub n plus two, which notice that's this sum over here, and then one over f sub n plus two times f sub n plus four. Now we already know that each of these component series are convergent because we just showed that this converges to one, and then this series right here defined by only these terms is the same as this, just offset a little bit. So that means we can break this apart into two sums. So I'll go ahead and do that. So we have one third, and then we're gonna have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over f sub n times f sub n plus two plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over f sub n plus two times f sub n plus four. Great. Now what I'd like to do is re-index this guy right here so we have the same subscripts as we have over here. And we can do that by replacing n with n minus two. So let's see what that gives us. So that's gonna give us one third, and now we have this same sum, which I'm just gonna bring down, plus now we have the sum, but if n minus two is equal to one, that makes n equal to three. So now our starting point is three, the ending point is still infinite, and then we have one over f sub n times f sub n plus two, because that was our goal, was to re-index these so that we can maybe add them. Okay, fantastic. Now what I'd like to do is notice that this second sum and this first sum are essentially the same, except this guy is missing the n equals one and the n equals two term. So what I'll do is I'll add in the n equals one and n equals two term, but that means I have to subtract them off too so nothing changes. So in other words, into this sum, we're going to insert the n equals one term and the n equals two term. So that's gonna be one over f sub one times f sub three plus one over f sub two times f sub four. Great, so that is the n equals one and n equals two term that this sum is missing, but now we need to subtract those. So I'll subtract those in their actual numerical form. So notice this is gonna be one half, and then this one right here is going to be one third. So notice I've essentially added zero because this term and this term are equal and opposite, and then this term and this term are equal and opposite. So let's see what that gives us. That means we can write this as one third, and then we have the sum n equals one to infinity of 
1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 2 plus that same thing because now that we've added in the n equals 1 and the n equals 2 term, this thing starts at 1 instead of at 3. We have 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 2, but now we have to subtract off a half and a third. Good. So now let's see what we've got. We've got 1 third, but we know that each of these have a value of 1 by part 1 of this video. So that adds up to 2 minus a half minus a third. Great. But now I'll leave it to you guys to check this super carefully, but I'll just tell you that this is equal to 7 over 18. So our final answer for this sum is 7 over 18. Great. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and then leave you guys with some other problems that are similar to try. Before I leave you guys, let's look at three similar problems that you can solve using the same techniques from this video. So the first one is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 6. So I bet you can do the same kind of partial fraction decomposition and leverage the fact that we know these two sums in order to find this value. But then, what about the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 2k, where k is arbitrary. So maybe we'd have n plus 8, n plus 10, so on and so forth. Is there a nice closed formula involving k for a sum like this? And then furthermore, what about a cubic type term in the denominator? Can we calculate that type of sum? In other words, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over f sub n times f sub n plus 2 times f sub n plus 4 using the same methods of partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so maybe play around with these and post what you find in the comments and we'll call it good.